Hello, Ken Spriggs here with uh, an unboxing and a review of the uh, two new Mobius 2001 Orion Space Clipper kits. The uh, 1350 scale, the very small one, and the very large 172 scale model kit. Uh, so I'll be go over, going over both of these and also comparing them to the original uh, model, which has been around since the late 60s the Aurora version, and uh, Mobius has a, a current version as well, which is actually the 160 scale of that model. So uh, I will be comparing all of three of those and looking at the new ones. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so I'm gonna begin uh, the review of the newest Space Clippers by showing you a comparison of all three that are currently available. And they're all obviously from Mobius, and um, and they're all styrene kits. So um, the original one, which is actually a scale of 1160, I'm gonna to refer to throughout the video as the original. And you can see this one's already painted up and I've already completed it. Um, they now have the two newest ones, which is the 1350 scale and the 178 scale, 72, 172 scale. So just to kind of give you an idea, so the original we're looking at, and I'm not gonna measure the little teeny antennae in the back, just gonna do the main part of the kit. This one is about 14 inches, a little over a foot. The 1350 is about six inches, and the big massive giant 172, It's 29 inches, which is, in, which is indicated on the Cult TV Man site where I can purchase these models. So just to kind of give you the idea of the large difference between all three of these, here's my hand, obviously. So here is the brand new one, the really big giant one, the regular original one, and then of course the little tiny 1350 so so very cool and again just to let you know and I've mentioned this before scale is one of those strange things that people often get confused about scale is not a size scale is a percentage it's a fraction so to use the most simplest measurement of all if you did one to one slash two scale which is one half it's one half the size of the actual thing. So the size of a scale model is a relation to the size of the actual thing. So when I say 1350 for the little one, people are going to be thinking in their minds, oh, well, the Enterprise 1350 is really big. It is really big because the Enterprise is really big. The Space Clipper, by comparison, is not anywhere near the size of the Starship Enterprise. So this little tiny one, it's only six inches, is technically in scale with the Starship Enterprise 1350. But you would think, well, that's so tiny. Well, how can it be so small? Again, because if these ships were real, the measurements that they tell us, the Space Clipper would be a much smaller craft than the Starship Enterprise, which is massive. It's a very big ship. So they could not, well, they would not do a 172 scale of the Starship Enterprise. It would be ridiculously large and, and too unmanageable for anybody to do anything with. And likewise, so this is 172. They didn't make it the same scale as the, as the Ares, which is 148, because again, this would be much larger and it would be an unwieldy type of model. So, so do what you want with that. But basically, that's, that's how you kind of figure out the scale is not always going to be a size and measurement. It's going to be a percentage of the actual size of the spaceship. So, all right. But this ship is, is amazingly large. It's really big. It's really well done. And obviously, it's going to look fantastic once I get it all build at some point here, paint it up, and, uh, and put onto a display. So, all right. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the smaller 1350 scale version. And the box art is the same on this one and the 172. It's the same, same exact box art and everything else except for the scale. So I went ahead and just put it together. I didn't build it up yet or anything or glue anything in place, but I just wanted to go ahead and put it on here, give you an idea of how it looks. So it's very nicely done. It's got some pretty cool detailing. Now the um, the wings do not have the the different panel lines like the larger one does. It's just smooth. But I'll show you the decals here in a moment, and those will make up for that. It does have the little turbines inside the engines, already one piece. I don't have the little tip on here as well. A nice little ship, very cool. Put a little six six inch model definitely nicely done and then i have this other sprue which has the little tail antennae whatever they are there's two of them in case you break one you have these little parts right here with the little cone shaped scoops which then go in this area right here and down here. All right. And then you also have the clear parts. So you have what they call the Aurora style base, a little stand part for it to clip into. You have the windows for the passenger section. And I believe these are just, yeah, they're the same number. So two of the cockpit windows in case you lose one of those as well. And no, no little separations of the cockpit um, windshield framework or anything. It's just an open spot there. So kind of hard to do it at that scale. So, okay, so very cool. Very cool little kit. Now let me show you the decals. So the decals are very similar, if not the same as the original, so you have the wallpaper ones for all the wings. That's why I'm saying you didn't need to have the, the engraved panel lines. This will take the place of it. The other decals which go on the top and the front and some go on the bottom. So very nicely done. Some little teeny pieces of them. So a very nice decal set. Pretty much just a reduced version of the the original set that goes with it so that's this kit in a nutshell this one is very very nice it'd be easy to build not too many parts um and it would build up to a nice little version of the of the space clipper so all right so let's go ahead and start taking a look at the um at the large 172. All right, so one more thing I'm gonna show you here is just the breakup of the, the main parts and also the instructions. So it's a pretty simple, straightforward build. You have the two halves of the main fuselage, which go together. You have the little engine piece, which is separate, which is nice. So you can paint this black before putting it into the kit to make it easier, not have to mask it. You have the, um, the main wingspan for the bottom. And you have the two upper wingspan parts which go on top of it. And let me show you, I'll show you on the bigger one as well, but again, when these two pieces go together, you get those nice iconic little openings in the front intakes or whatever they are because you can paint those black inside and then you glue it together and then you paint it the other colors the light gray or the white 
and the same at the back you have that little bit of opening there so all right so very nice so let's take a look at the instructions so the instructions are very simple it's just a fold out section one page for the instructions of how to put it all together very straightforward and one page that shows you the decal placement over the ship and a little image of it from the film it's 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 a nice little image but you really can't make out much from it it's i don't think it would be that much helpful in helping you to figure out what colors to paint it but <laughs> this is actually much better and it looks really nice on it and then on the back you just have some other models that they offer so okay all right so fantastic little version of the space clipper at 1350. all right so we're gonna start looking at the 172 version of this the much larger one so i'm definitely going to point out the advantages and disadvantages the things that i see as issues on the kit which really aren't that many uh, but let me start out by saying it's a fantastic kit as you saw from the original comparison of the three it's it's a massive model it's really nicely done it looks very accurate to detailing and um, it certainly has a full interior with the cockpit passenger section an awful lot that you can do with it some really cool things which we'll look at here shortly so i wanted to start off by saying that i don't want you to think that i'm negative on the kit and i don't like it i do like it i like it a lot but every kit has its issues every kit has something that might be questionable so there are a few things that um, i've noticed that we'll go over um, as we're doing it but the first thing i wanted to do is since i already have out the 1350 this is the decal sheet that i just showed you um, when i when i saw that these were coming out i just figured that they were going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on the 172 have the much larger decal set with all these little panels and everything else to go on to it uh, but alas that is not the case this is the 1350 decal set this is the 172 and i thought for a moment i thought well did i did i miss something did i not not get it in so i looked at the instructions which i might as well go ahead and do here now okay so Here's your interior, your engine in the back. Here's putting it inside, gluing on the other parts. Here, put on the sub assemblies, adds a few extra parts, the stand, and then we look at the decals. So at first I thought, oh look, it's pointing to some of those. No, it's not, it's pointing to the tiny little circles exactly where it's pointing to and that's it and those black marks which i'm not sure i will use right there little things on top ones on the bottom a couple on the sides but that's it so there clearly is no wallpaper graphics like you see on the original and like you see on this one for the 1350. So very curious. Unless they're planning on selling a separate set, which I haven't heard anything about, and they don't typically do that with Mobius. I know Ron 2 has done it with their Enterprises, which makes sense with the very large decals. Um, so I'm not sure why they did that, why they did not include it. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's okay for me. I'm not planning. I would use this for the 1350, and I used it for the original one but i wasn't planning on using it for this larger one i was wanting to do a paint scheme on it and um i'm hoping and assuming that um lou Dalmeso with aztec dami will make his own mask set for this larger kit the 172 and that he will include masks to actually paint a darker gray put masks over the panels you want to stay gray paint a lighter gray and then when you're done, do a blending coat of white over the whole thing. So very lackluster decal set for this, for this ship, which is quite amazing because it's so big that I would have thought they would have done something more. So, so we'll see what happens. 
Um, I've already found some other sources of decals for the Pan Am logo for the 172 and the and the the um, Pan Am name and that sort of thing. So that'll be the ones that I'll go with those. And um, and then, like I said, hopefully with the Aztec dummy on the rest of it. So all right. So I want to get that out of the way. Um, and again, I love this kit. It's a fantastic kit, but this is rather a strange anomaly. Not sure why this is all they included for decals on such a large spacecraft. So, all right, let's go ahead and start looking at the model. All right, so this kit being so large, it's hard to get all the parts in in camera. So I'm gonna look at, at these as separate pieces. I showed you the whole thing, but I just sort of popped together to show you how it works. So um, very similar design to the original and to the 1350. So you start with the, um, the bottom wings and wingspan, which is all one piece. Very nice. And the wingspan, by the way, is about 15 inches wide. So lots of detail, really nice panel lines, nice and deep, nice and well done. So again, this would be very easy to do if I did a painting, put a mask on it, painted lighter colors above it, and then used a blending coat to get that effect with the grays and that sort of thing. So very nice, very nicely done. And then you have your two upper wing panels, also very nicely detailed. And they have these little connectors, which just go right down into these notches right here. So all you do is just pop this down inside and there's some pins as well. So what you would do, just like you would do in the other one, is look at that really nicely done. That's beautiful. That looks great. I just love how that looks. So what I would do is I would paint black inside of here first and on the upper part before I put it together. Then I would glue these pieces on and also underneath here as well because you have that little part there also and um and then once i go over it with the other colors and the lighter grays and the whatever it would stay black inside and you'd see that nice detail in there but nicely done very beautifully done on that section i really like that a lot that looks great and that's going to really add to the accurate look of this ship okay so you've got both of these which you would put on and then you have the two halves of the fuselage which go together and on the inside you have connectors or places to put in the cockpit and you have the little shelves and the parts to put in for the passenger section, which is all self-contained. Now what I might end up doing, because here's, here's how this is gonna have to be done. So the entire interior is gonna have to be all done, painted, wired up, lit, everything, attached inside the kit before you glue these two halves together. Before you paint anything on the outside because there's no way to get that in there once it's in there. Now, what I could do, and even for possibility of lighting and such things and wiring, is cut out some of this section. It's really not necessary. It's all gonna be covered under here anyway. Um, and, and the actual passenger section does not sit on this part here at all. It's raised up as I just showed. So you could do that. It would be a little easier to, to be able to access that and get the wiring in and everything. But but. It's definitely gonna to have to be put together before everything inside, before I do any outside painting. Now, um, I do wanna point out this, this seam at the top. It's, it's kind of odd because it's, it's a nice fit. It's a nice seam. Um, it, go, it disappears pretty much up here. Once you get it painted, you're not gonna see the ridged part up here, but the rest of it will be visible. Now, some of it even, like this here, it looks like it's natural as part of the panel. So I'm going to look over the images, which I'll show here in a little bit, of the um, Adam Johnson book, The Lost Science of 2001, where there are some images of the ship. 
might be able to get away with just leaving that as an actual panel line. Especially two here, as you can see, you have like these little panels, but they don't go all the way up to it. You have this one in the middle. So it definitely suggests that this could be part of the panels and maybe just even sand down like these ones that are obviously continuations and these parts like right here, that sort of thing. So we'll see when that goes together. The same thing, well, the bottom and the front. So obviously you'd wanna make this one big panel, that kind of thing. All right. So that's the, the main fuselage. Then you have this little connector, which goes between the back of the fuselage and the engine parts. And there are other parts that connect onto this as well, once you get that in place. And then you have the two halves of the engine, which go together. And just like the smaller version, you have the engine interior part separate, which is very helpful. You can paint this black before putting it into here to avoid the issues of having to mask it all off. Maybe do like the inside edge of this as well. But that goes inside first and then you put it together. And it makes the engine. Now I did notice one little thing here. There's a little bit of a gap right there. And I tried to push it back. It's as far back as it can go to see in there but there's actually some stops behind it so that's just the way it is that'll have to be patched up in some way uh, not a big deal and then of course the little antenna whatever that thing is goes into here so one other thing I've noticed and again I'll show that here in a moment when I look at the Adam Johnson book is that this is not smooth on the ship or at least it's not completely smooth there are some lines coming out, some radial lines. They kind of look, it's hard to see, you can't really see them in the film, but you can see them in the book on the model. And I think I've seen some resin versions that have done that and put some, some ridges. I don't know if they're ridges. You could score your own in here with a panel line etcher, that kind of a thing, if you wanted to, or even put some very, very thin styrene strip in there to augment that if you wanted to. And then it'll be black, so it won't really be all that visible anyway. But that's that's something that you could add on to it. And then, of course, there are some parts that go along over here. Parts that go down here that have the little conal scoops or whatever they are that go in there. So, all right. And then right in here in the edges, you have the little turbines, which come with the kit that go into there as well. So, all right. So those are all the main parts of the ship. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other added pieces and then we'll look at the we'll look at the stand in the cockpit or the interior. All right, so here are the turbines that I mentioned that go inside the engines. You also have these two conal scoops which go on the sides right here. Those two holes. And then you have all of these little pieces that have the little cone sections which are open by the way, which is nice. These ones, these ones, uh, you have some over here as well. And those finish off all of the detail. Get in there. Okay. So these finish off like all this area right here and they match up with the little indentations here as well. And you have the one down on the bottom through here, too. Same thing, same situation. All right. Some of them are built in, like these ones right here. All right. And as I showed in the decal set, they have those little almost triangular black markings that go in there. I probably won't use those. I'll probably simply use some weathering powders, that kind of thing, to make that look that way. So... Then you have this little piece here that goes on top, some ridges in it, and that goes right into here. All right. You have the back spine, 
or whatever those are, antennae, which are, I'm glad they made it a separate piece, which is really easy to do. So there's just a hole in that. Oops, sorry. That just goes right into here. Have to sand that down a bit to make that fit, of course, but that's supposed to show a continuation of that part. So once you get it in, you might have to do a little bit of puttying. Yeah, you have to putty around the edge of it there, that kind of thing. But it's nice that it's separate, so I'm not going to run the risk of breaking it. All right. So then we have, for the cockpit, which is really cool, you have this opening. So you have this separate piece, which goes right into it. And it has some, some lines built into it. That just glues onto there. Pardon the sirens out there. I live near a hospital, as I mentioned in my previous videos. <laughs> I get either ambulance or fire trucks all the time. Um, so I used to think for some weird reason that this was all black. It isn't. I don't know why I ever thought that. If you look at any images, it's clearly not. It's the same color, but it does have gray in some of these panels. I think these ones here... I'm not sure. I'll have to look at it and see. Some of these are gray. Some of these are lighter. So you can paint this up before you glue it down into the kit. Likewise, you have the really nice cockpit framework for the windshield, which is really nice. And there's a little, a little notch. This would be put in from the outside. Sorry for the lighting. Let's see if I can get that in there. I don't want it to drop inside. All right, so it's not perfectly in there, but that's how that's going to look. It's going to look pretty cool. And of course, there's a clear window from behind it, which I'll show you in a moment. And what I'm thinking will have to happen is this is going to have to go in after this is put together. It can be done before I paint the whole thing, but because of how it fits on there, you really couldn't. I mean, I guess you could try to glue half of it on and glue the other half. But what I would probably do is paint this first, put the clear into it. And again, if I use, if there's a masking set from Aztec Dummy, I'm sure it would include the windows. And I could just ma mask off the windows, glue this in place, and then paint the entire outside with this in place. Same with the side windows. And, um, and that way I don't have to worry about messing up the clear part or anything like that. So, which brings me then to the clear parts. So, these are really pretty cool. So you have your, your standard windows, which go into sides. You have your cockpit. Now, I may not use these for the windows for the main reason that as thick as they have to be, they distort the image behind it. And so you're really not gonna see a clear image in that cockpit, which, it's, it's sizable enough that you're going to be able to make out, especially if it's lit up, you're going to be able to make out detail in there. Um, but what I will probably do is end up using just some clear PETG or something like that for these rather than using these parts. And for the cockpit framework, I could use three different pieces and I could just have like one on each side, one in the middle, and do it that way. And it would be, it would be, I think, a better approach than trying to use the, the clear parts. But it does include those if that's what you want to end up using, which is fine. Um, two other things which it includes, which I think are really awesome, is you have these little clear parts here. I don't know what those are, landing strobes or lights or whatever. They go right in here on either side which the other ones had the space for them, but didn't have them. I don't know if any of the original kits from the 60s or 70s actually had these, but I can't recall, and they don't have them on the Mobius one, of course, so that's really cool that those go right there. Sorry. So that's going to go right there. Now, we don't see them lit up in the film or strobing or anything, but you could do that if you wanted to, for sure. And then one other thing which I haven't seen on any other kit is they give you these little teeny ones here, which are actually the wingtips. And they go, sorry, they go right there. 
Very cool. Very cool indeed. So very much I'm considering having these strobe because that's what they would do. That's what these kind of things do on, on spacecraft or airplanes on their wings and that sort of thing. Be very easy to put a little strobe that the two sides are in sync. You can easily run a wire through this into the main part. So that would be really easy to do. So that's really cool. I really like that a lot. You got both of those, which make up that part. So, okay. So these are all the parts of the exterior, the outer part of the ship. Uh, let me go ahead and move these out of the way, show you the base, and then we're gonna look at the interior. All right, so before we look at the interior, let me go ahead and show you the base. So it also likewise has a very large version of the Aurora style base and a very large support arm. Now, I probably will not be using this, although I might modify a piece of this to suspend the model from a background with a space background, just much like I did for the, for the original version, but obviously much larger. But what I did do is I went ahead and put it in and it had, when I say had, well, I think it still does. It has a little nub right here. So when I put it down in here, the bottom of that hooks down inside and then the rest of it slides down in. You can see I cracked it when I tried to pull it back out because it was really tight. I'm not gonna put it back in. So that's a bit of an issue. You might wanna sand in the inside of this a little bit to clean that up a bit so it's not quite as tight. I think they intended that to be the case, but uh, as you can see, I already cracked that. So just kind of watch on that one there too. All right, so now to my favorite part about this is the full interior, which is really, really awesome, really nicely done, really quite beautiful. So let's start with the passenger section. So you have the floor and sides, which are all one piece. You can see little openings for the, for the windows little bit of ridges and detailing. These are just the platforms for the seats. These are not the chairs themselves, of course. You have the raised platform in the middle that the stewardess walks down and the front there. Then you have the, um, the front wall with the front door, two little displays there. And you have the back wall again with the door and there's no displays on this one. Okay, so these three parts make up the floor and all the walls. And then you have the ceiling, which is all one piece, nicely detailed with all the little light panels. So this is what I'm gonna call the second issue that I have with this kit. And again, I love the kit, but this is an issue, something they could have done differently. Definitely with an interior, you're gonna to wanna to light it. So clearly in the, in the Aries, they had open panels that you can light with that idea. These are all solid, not open, and they're fairly small. So those are going to be a little tricky. I mean, I can certainly drill those out with a pin vise and try to clean them out somewhat, but it would be so much easier if they had simply left those as open open holes. They don't even really need a clear part in it. I could easily put, you know, some clear over this and frost it and light it up. So, but definitely, I mean, how else are you going to light this? You're not going to light it through the, the ceiling panels? <laughs> and that's what's going to be visible. So when you're looking through the windows, which are big enough, it's kind of hard to see it on here, you're going to be able to make out, and when it's lit up, you're going to be able to make out the detail in there for sure. And especially, I'm going to put some little figures in there. So, so that's another opportunity that I think they missed. They could have opened these panels up. But again, it's, it's workable. I can make it happen myself. Um, and it's the same thing with the, um, with the cockpit. They don't have any of those either. So, but here are all the chairs for the passenger section. And I believe two of them are for the cockpit, for the stewardesses. Very nicely done. All one piece, which makes it a lot easier. So you've got your um, your headrests, 
you've got your armrests on the back of them. You even have the built-in little display, little TV screen, which um, we see a commercial playing on by Haywood Floyd, so very cool. There are 40 of these, and I counted, and there's um, 36. There's 36 in the passenger section. So two more in the in the in the cockpit leaves you leave you some spares. So that's kind of cool. That's nice. All right. Then you have your main floor for the cockpit, and as you can see, you have the pilots' chairs are built in, but there are two of the same little platforms like in the passenger section, which would accommodate the stewardess chairs so you put two of them there you have a little control panel which i believe well i don't believe there is i know some of the aftermarket since they started looking at do have some of the controls decals for that so we'll have to take a look and see you have your two walls that go in with some detail some little panels which again you could um, potentially put decals in or light those up. I'll have to look at the stills from the film. And then you have your ceiling, which likewise has some openings where you would have the lights. So those would have to be cut out in order to light that as well. And I'll have to look and see what colors they are. I just kind of assumed it was red, but I don't believe they are. I don't think the cockpit is red in the space clipper, but we can see from the film and go from there. So, okay. So very nice, very nicely done. Very nicely done there. One little aside, and, and it's not necessarily a critique, but um, Mobius, other than, you know, finally they're doing interiors, which I think is great. I really wish they had done one for the Discovery, which would have been fairly straightforward and easy to do. Um, I'm glad they did a nice one for the Ares, and now they finally did one for the sizable uh, 172 but they don't include figures. Also baffling. Even if they're just generic. I mean, we have figures in the moon bus. So again, I don't know why it's kind of odd, but that's not an issue. I still have the 3D versions, 3D print version files that I can scale down to the 172 and put those in as well. So those would be pretty cool. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions. All right, so I showed these earlier but I'll just kind of go over them a little bit more here. So, zoom in there a bit. All right. So it starts with your passenger section. You then have your, your cockpit it goes together and then they go over the rear engine setup. And then you look at the main fuselage and again, you're putting in the interior before you connect the main fuselage together. And then you put on the different parts of the wings. So a lot of these will be sort of a sub-assembly. And here's your sub-assemblies at the end. You get your main fuselage, your engine, your wings that you put together. And then you put on the extra pieces and your stand and so on. And then they have Pretty much the same kind of an image from the smaller one, except this one, of course, just gives you the placings of the little bit of decals that they did include. Which again, they're showing the different panels of the different colors, which is rather bizarre and odd because they didn't include any of those. So, but all in all, a fantastic kit, a fantastic model. Definitely one that I've been waiting for for a long time and a really nice one that's gonna build up pretty fantastically. So other than those few issues, which I can certainly work around, I think it's pretty amazing. I think it's incredible. It's gonna build up and be pretty awesome. And uh, I'll have to think up some ideas of how to display it and get it up there. Pretty much probably gonna be the same way that I have my original version where on the wall, I just have a printed out image with the Earth and Space Station 5 in a space background, and it just hangs in front of it 
on its little display hook, which I've connected in, painted it all black, and then um, and then put the model on. It looks like it's it's in flight, that sort of thing. So we'll see. We'll see how we can work that out. Might have to be something a little bigger and maybe more of a stand type of a, an approach since this model's so big, being about two and a half feet long. So, all right. But a fantastic kit for sure. Um, I'm not planning on building this until probably early in the year. I do want to build it in time for Wonderfest in 2023. But um, I also want to wait and see what other kind of aftermarket sets come out. Like I said, like an Aztec dummy set. I've already started to see some decal sets, that sort of thing. So, all right. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is take a look at Adam Johnson's images in the 2001 The Lost Science book. And these are the actual studio model. Now, they are in black and white. But there are some different images of it. All right. So here's what I was talking about. So you can see the engine scoops. There are some definite lines in there. So it kind of looks like they're just basically panel lines. They don't like some, they look like raised um, types of things, but you could certainly reproduce that. But it's definitely visible in that image. Most of the ones we see like this one, you really can't tell. Some on the bottom. And from the side. So what I want to do is compare it to the decals on the original model that I have. So notice on the top, first of all, these aren't anywhere near accurate. They're not anything uniform. There are a bunch of different panels that are different shades of gray throughout it. If we look at the wing, It's hard to say. I mean, it's a little more accurate. It looks like it. This looks a little more closer to it. So the wings are probably somewhat accurate. I think that piece right there, eh, it's really hard to say again at that angle. But definitely you can see some little L-shaped panels right here, which are not on this. Underneath the wings as well. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say. Definitely some definite scorching on the bottom. On the back right there, you can see. So that's important. So I think doing the painting is going to be a lot better to bring about those those different panel lines and how they're supposed to look. And like I said, you see in the, the back scoop there how it's darkened and also the front. Let's see if I can get a better picture. Here we go. Yeah, you can see how those little openings are dark. That's what I was saying about painting that black first and then putting them together to give that image. And that front piece there is not black. It looks darker in this image, but I think that's a shadow. Let me show you one more set of images here. Okay, so you got these. So same thing, it's definitely not black. These are all the same image, they're just different lighting and shading. And there you can still just slightly make out the lines in the engine scoop. Okay. Let me look at just one more thing here. All right, so I was looking to see if there was any indication of maybe a panel line going up through the center, but really it's hard to make out any panel lines per se 
it seems like the whole thing was rather smooth. I mean, there's some back here on the bottom on the, around this part, which is certainly there and that you're not really intended to fill in. Um, but most of the fuselage, especially on the top, is just the different shaded gray panels. It's really hard to make out, sorry, any kind of uh, specific panel lines. So we'll play with that as we go. This will definitely be a, a nice resource to use to try to figure out some of the colors or shading that I'm going to do on it. So, all right. All right. So some really, really awesome kits. Uh, really am happy with the 172. It is going to be a beautiful model to build. Very, very large. So I'm going to have to come up with a, uh, a base that can accommodate it. And, um, and also, obviously, lighting up the interior and putting some figures in it. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I don't have any immediate plans to build it, but definitely probably starting early in the year. And I want to have it done in time for Wonderfest. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I do want to look and see what other aftermarket sets are coming out for it and, um, and get some ideas about that as well on what I can use for that. So, all right. Well, thank you to all my new subscribers. Uh, I highly recommend these kits. Uh, go ahead and pick one up. And um, once I start building it, I will definitely be posting the videos on that as well. So, all right. Thanks a lot.